morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you could join me today. It's Sunday morning, February the 28th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC. And I'm just glad that we can have this time together. Glad that you could tune in onto our broadcast today. If you're new, welcome. If you're part of our existing congregation, well, I can't wait until we can all get together. And we just need to continue to pray that uh, that would happen in God's perfect time. So, would you bow with me in prayer today before I begin my sermon? Jesus, we just want to thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, you're so kind to us. Father, you give us everything that we need to live a godly life. And Lord, you've given us your holy word. And Father, this morning as I open the pages of Second Peter, and as we discuss the things that are written within, that are inspired of you, O Lord, that you would teach us, God, that we would learn, that we would grow, that we would be strengthened and encouraged to walk away in our lives that is, is righteous and, and pleasing to you. Father, I just pray for each person that's out there, God, that you would just minister to every need that is present. In the name of Jesus, amen. So this morning, uh, our text is in Second Peter chapter 2. And at the time of this writing, you see, there was false teachers that were infiltrating the church. Peter was in jail, and while he was in jail, false teachers were arising, and they were teaching things that were contrary to what the apostles had taught the, the believers when they founded the churches. They were spreading false doctrines which were extremely dangerous to the health and well-being of the believers. And Peter's teaching and writing here in Second Peter um, served to expose these dangerous teachings and the dangerous false teachers and warn the believers so that they would not be led into error and eventual destruction. So let's start by reading verses 1 to 3 in this chapter. And uh, we're going to focus on the danger of these false teachers. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers amongst you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. So here, Peter warns the churches in his letter that just as Israel saw false prophets in their history, there would be also false teachers that would arise amongst them. The heresies that these false teachers promote have secretly slipped into the church, and left unchecked, these heresies would be destructive to individuals on an individual level and also to the church as a whole, to the congregation as a whole. The heresy these false teachers are promoting consists of unsound doctrine and depraved conduct. Unlike true prophets, these men were not speaking from divine authority, but were inspired for their teachings by their own flesh, or maybe by the whispers of the enemy, by the devil. And at any rate, uh, they were unspiritual, um, of the world, of evil rather than of Christ. And the truth of peace, Peter's words here rings down the halls of history. And uh, those, those words are just as relevant to us today as they were at the time that they were written. And the effect of what these men were teaching is that they are even denying the sovereign Lord who had bought them. See, these teachers have had every opportunity to be redeemed because Jesus paid for the full price of their sins. But they have turned away from the Lord's true gospel and have instead tried to forge their own gospel, which is not a redeemed gospel at all. It's not led by the Spirit of God, but it is a message that is self-centered, self-focused, and self-serving. The way of the false teachers to whom Paul Peter was referring appeared on the onset to be good and truthful, but there was a deception. They secretly introduce twisted thinking into the church. 
They think only about themselves and treat the doctrine of the grace of God as a place to wipe their feet. Although they say some of the right things, their lifestyle says that they believe otherwise. The reason Peter speaks so strongly against them is that their teachings spread like gangrene amongst other people and harm the spiritual vitality of the the body of Christ. And they also bring discredit to the Christian cause to outsiders. Their foolish behavior and teachings will cause the non-Christian world to look at them as representatives of the true body of Christ And in so doing this, because they do not represent the true body of Christ, they will bring the way of truth into disrepute. These men do not have the fear of the Lord in them, and because of it, they will bring swift destruction upon themselves. Because what they say sounds so good and appeals to the flesh of those who are listening, many, many people who are believers in Christ, who are not discerning, will be led astray by their teachings. In verse 3 of our text, one of the primary heresies that these teachers were deceiving people with is that they were leading people astray to believe that godliness was a means to personal financial gain. Peter says that they are exploiters of the flock of God to line their own pockets with stories that they have made up. Now this heresy certainly rings true in our society today. All you have to do is turn on the television or go onto the internet to find a variety of teachers who are still doing this. They piggyback their licentious and lavish lifestyles on the backs of the people who naively send them support. Peter says that these men, these false teachers, are exploiters. Exploitation is a word that has a devious meaning. The person doing the exploiting knows full well that they are taking advantage of the one who is being exploited. These teachers are using stories which they have made up and have no truth to them to exploit other people's pocketbooks. They are greedy for financial gain and they use their teachings to justify their behavior. The scriptures have warned of this teaching in 1 Timothy chapter 6, where the Apostle Paul says, If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions and constant friction between people of a corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and trapped and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. These ungodly people, they turn the church into a commercial operation. They are men of evil ambition. They are covetous. They desire to get something for themselves, whether it be power over people, possibly the perception of being a scholar, popularity is their their God, or even money. With that motivation, they prove that they are not being led by the Holy Spirit. After discussing the danger that these false teachers present to the church, the Apostle Peter continues writing about them, outlining that they will reap destruction. From verse 4 we read, For they did not, if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he did condemn the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, And if he rescued Lot 
a righteous man who is distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless. For that righteous man living amongst them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds that he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. So Peter uses the examples of Scripture of the destruction of both angels and people who knew better but decided to follow paths of wickedness rather than righteousness. The false teachers Peter is writing to the churches about are haughty and they think that they can manipulate and cheat people for their own gain and get away with it. However, they fail to understand that God is no respecter of person or being. Those who act wickedly will reap judgment in the end. Peter uses three examples of those who embraced wickedness and were judged. He gives the example of how certain angels who sinned, although they are very powerful beings, were sent to hell and are being held in chains of darkness where they await their final judgment. He gives the pre-flood world as an example where the ancient peoples were filled with wickedness and the earth was filled with violence because of them. Everyone except for Noah and his children were swept away in the judgment of the great flood. He gives the example of Sodom and Gomorrah where people willfully pursued wickedness until the day that Lot, the only righteous man among them, was ushered out of the city along with his family before the fire of God's judgment fell and consumed the wicked with a hailstorm of burning sulfur, turning everything to ash. Like these three examples, the false teachers that Peter describes will not be spared from God's righteous judgment either. Peter goes on to describe these false teachers further, state, starting in verse 10. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, they are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings, yet not even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not heap abuse on such beings when bringing judgment on them from the Lord. But these people blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like unreasoning animals, creatures of instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed, and like animals they too will perish. Very strong words by Peter here. This is very serious, what he is talking about. You see, some false teachers crave wealth and power over people. And, they, and some are immoral in their lifestyle. And others are despisers of authority. Take a close look at teachers who refuse to subject themselves to God-ordained authority. You will often, uh, more often than not, find that there is more happening in that individual than just a rebellious attitude. Immoral, lustful behavior and a rebellious spirit often walk hand in hand. Such rebellious men have a very difficult time obeying any kind of rules placed over them, whether they be rules of God as outlined in the scriptures or the rules of governing authorities that have been placed over them by God. Peter says that such men despise authority. They want to do things their own way and in their own timing. They want to interpret things on their own terms without heeding guidance from God's word or listening to sound doctrinal principles. Commentator William MacDonald, author of the Believing Bible Commentary, states this in reference to 2 Peter 2, verse 10. These men are bold and willful. Their brazen repudiation of all duly constituted authority seems to have no limits. No language is too extreme for them to use in reviling their rulers. The fact that human governments are ordained by God as, as displayed in Romans 13.1 and that it is forbidden to speak evil of them in Acts 23.5 does not influence such men in the least. They seem to delight in shocking people by their belligerent, belligerent denunciation of dignitaries. These men are bold and arrogant and they lack understanding. Peter points out that they not only slander human authority, they also are quick to slander celestial beings. And in context with what follows, these celestial beings are actually evil spirits. The false teachers believe that they have power to do as they please, however they please, whenever they please, but they are mistaken 
In Jude chapter 9, it is written this, But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. See, these false teachers are arrogant. They believe that they have power within themselves and authority within themselves to, to stand against authorities, whether they be evil authorities or good authorities. The fact of the matter is, when we stand against evil authorities, we have to stand in the name of Christ, in the name of the Lord. The Lord rebuke you. That's how Michael handled the, the devil. You see, Peter continues to speak, saying, They will be paid back with the harm that they have done. Their idea of pleasure is to carouse in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstables, unstable. They are expert, experts in greed, an accursed brood. Peter was warning the church to be careful of these teachers. They proclaimed themselves to be righteous, but in actuality they were sexually immoral and predatory, looking for women to take advantage of in order to satisfy their own lust, which is never satisfied. These kind of people are hedonists, seekers of pleasure, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, always looking for ways to please themselves at the expense of others. They, they have left the straight way, says Peter in verse 15, and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Bezer, who loved the wages of wickedness. But he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey, an animal without speech, who spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. You see, in the Old Testament times, Balaam, he told the Moabite king Balak, how to get the Israelites to commit sexual sin and idolatry to have them uh, fall out of favor with God and be destroyed. That's a picture of how false prophets in Peter's day were enticing the believers into depraved conduct and greed. The Israelites fell into transgression due to these traps and God sent a dead, deadly plague on them as a result. Peter uses this example to warn the church that if they are led astray, like the Israelites were led astray into sin by Balaam, God will bring discipline upon them. These people, referring to the false teachers again in, in verse 17, these people are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them. For they mouth empty boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, while they themselves are slaves of depravity, for people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and again are entangled in it and overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Of them the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit, and a sow that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. Peter was very upfront with his condemnation of these men whose practices were leading the believing communities away from the truth and into sin. They were not... Uh, they were not spared harsh words by Peter. They will not escape the judgment of God. These particular teachers remind us of Judas, who was called by Christ to be a disciple. We know the story. It's a particular uh, uh, note worthy uh, consideration that Judas was the treasurer for Jesus and his disciples and was stealing money from the funds. He walked with Jesus, beheld the glory of Jesus as he performed miracles and sat under Jesus' teaching only to betray him in the end. Well, when we encounter similar ministries within the church today, we ought to heed Peter's warning, steer clear and expose the lies for what they are. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 10 and 11, we are told, Test and prove what pleases the Lord. 
have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful to mention what the disobedient do in secret. There are many modern examples of false teachers who promote the godless behaviors described by Peter. Those who are preaching that the way to Christ is paved with dollars in this world or of this group. It's up to us to discern the truth based upon the principles of the full Word of God. Modern prosperity teachers who preach not a full gospel of Christ, but they only preach to exploit God's people with lavish lifestyles. They are not true ministers of the gospel of Christ. They present a different gospel and lead people's, uh, people of, of God into error. Likewise, ministries where teachers are proclaiming that sexually immoral practices as defined by the scriptures are permissible or blessed by God also fall into these same categories. Now I know these are very hard words, but the teachings that these false teachers were bringing into the early church were so serious. And Peter wanted to stand very strongly against them because they have a way of nullifying the effect that God wants His church to have in this world. Now, if you're here this morning and you're listening to this message and you've been led astray by a false teacher, just reject what has been said and and turn to the Word of God and look at the Word of God for what it says. Heed the warning that Peter is saying to the church here today. And if you're finding yourself following along with false teaching. It only is a matter of time before in your error you will begin to teach others about the false teachings that you've been taught and then you in turn will become a false teacher as well. And for this I would just ask you at this time if you've been led astray by false teachings and you recognize it in your spirit right now, repent. Turn back to the Lord. Ask Him to forgive you The Lord is rich in mercy and He desires you to come back to the right path. There's some people out there, I understand this, and the scriptures teach it, whose hearts are so hardened that they will not return. But for those of us that are listening today, I I appeal to you. Use the Word of God as your guideline. Don't let the enemy lead you astray with things that sound good to your flesh, which are mere ideas of man, or they are derived from the well of man's emotion. Now, I'm not saying that thinking about things deeply is wrong, or that feeling things deeply is wrong, but we need to be led by the Holy Spirit into all truth. We need to be led by the Spirit. And what does the Spirit say concerning the truth? My word is truth. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. If you want to know what's spiritual versus what's from the realm of man, look to the word of God and be led by the spirit of God through his word. You will walk in life if you walk in context with God's word in the way that it was intended to be lived out. And that will show you what is of man and what is of God. For there is a way that seems right into a man, but it leads into death therein. Follow the path of life. Reject the false teachers and their prosperity gospel that they preach. Reject those who, who give license to immorality in, in things that the Bible says are, are wrong and they encourage believers to to accept and participate with. Reject these kind of teachings and see the life of Christ born in and through you. And let's just uh, close this sermon today in a word of prayer. God, you, you see the hearts and lives of people that are out there listening to this broadcast today. I just pray, Father, that you'd give people discernment. That, Father, the, the word that has been seeded in their heart today would bear fruit. God, I pray against anything that would try to 
pick off the word in the hearts of the people that are listening today. God, I just pray that your protection would be over the body of Christ. Lord, we need you. We, we can't operate without you and we're so susceptible to being led astray, Lord. Help us to be, um, to be led by your Spirit and to be led into truth through your word. God, I just pray that if there's anyone out there that's broken or, or feeling like they recognize that they, they may need to change ways, God, I pray that you give them strength to turn to you and that you would lead them, God, into truth. And I praise you and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon.